Hi everyone, I'm Manuel and I work at Seagate in the research organization and focus on data security. I'd like to discuss how a RISC-V based architecture helps to improve data trust at the edge. This is not gonna be a very technical talk. I will try to explain how RISC-V enables better data protection, specifically for data coming from endpoints and processed at the edge. A quick explainer about the edge. It is a location not a thing. It's the outer boundary of the network, sometimes hundreds or even thousands of miles from the nearest enterprise or cloud data center. And the edge can be find, found in a wide range of locations, including at floors of manufacturing plants, on roofs of buildings, near cell phone uh, towers, and in barns of farms, for instance. Hopefully that helps to set the context for the remainder of this talk. Um, I think pretty much everyone can agree that machine learning and artificial intelligence will influence the design of next generation compute infrastructures. And that trend will drive a significant increase of edge based autonomous decision making systems, increasingly impacting our daily lives. A combination of edge and emerging threats requires us to rethink data security. Not only are the threat models for edge deployments different when compared to traditional data centers, ML and AI also introduce a whole new set of vulnerabilities. For example, we have seen a piece of tape on a stop sign throwing off self-driving cars. Or in another situation, the misclassification of objects by ML systems when inserting hidden information into the image. These new threats are the result of the limitations in the current ML technologies and are generally classified into two groups. This is taken from a 2019 Harvard University report. At the high level, the attacks can be categorized as data input attacks and data poisoning attacks. Data input attacks exploit model weaknesses. Malicious actors change the inputs fooling the ML system into making mistakes typically undetected. For instance, in a 2014 paper by Goodfellow and others, they showed that adding a small amount of noise to images and invisible to the human eye makes an ML system misclassify that image. On the other hand, data poisoning attacks corrupt the training process. The model learns malicious behavior or even a backdoor causing the system to malfunction benefiting the malicious actors. A 2020 paper from Texas A&M shows how effective such an attack can be when training a Trojan for deep neural networks. Countering these new, set, uh, new threats requires an increasing focus on data integrity and trustworthiness. For that, we need a new generation of security infrastructures that always protects data. Risk five gives us the opportunity to, re to rethink how to address these challenges. Data integrity and trust are key in a world that uses autonomous systems. All data flowing into these systems should come from sensors and endpoints that are known and trusted. And when the data are moved around, all systems touching those data must be secured as well. If not, Malicious actors may alter the data feeding these systems, causing them to malfunction. So what is needed is a chain of custody architecture for data. It contains roughly four elements. One is trusted endpoints. They must have the ability to respond to secure identity challenges, the ability to respond to challenges attesting to the endpoints firmware and runtime correctness, and the ability to enroll into one or more trust domains. The second component is data assurance. Key data are managed as objects that are cryptographically protected for integrity and optionally for confidentiality. Then we extend the integrity protection to include provenance of data. That is, use the endpoint's cryptographic ID to sign data manifests for proof of origin. This requires that the crypto ID is recognized as part of a trust domain by provisioning it for that domain. The third component is data notarization. It is 
optionally used to establish data creation in an immutable way by recording the unique identifiers of specific data objects or data object sets. This is typically done for non-repudiation reasons and may use ledger technologies. The fourth component, component is data mobilization. It is key in any endpoint and edge use case, whether the data stays at the edge or is moved from endpoint to edge to cloud. In all cases, it is an imperative that all devices and applications that touch or transform data are known and trusted. The main ingredient for this architecture is secure compute to support sensitive services such as identity and platform integrity attestation, data integrity and origin validation, and provisioning. How does such a framework look like? To answer that question, we created a proof of concept using a RISC-V platform. We took a DJI drone and added what we call a secure data creation device plus supporting applications. This setup captures data acquired during drone flights. The collected data are then stored in a lightweight object store on the drone and cryptographically secured by a drone mounted trusted element. All applications within the trusted element execute on a RISC-V development board secured by enclaves. That allowed us to separate critical security functionality from the general purpose Linux OS that is running on the board. The board is then mounted to the drone and powered by the drone's battery. After drone flights, data are offloaded via the network interface of that board. Besides the drone, the project also included other components. A workstation as a stand-in for an edge stored solution. It runs a data offload service. That offload service implements multiple checks. One, it verifies a manifest and a signature. Then two, verifies the data against that manifest. And then three, records or checks data ownership with the notary service. Once data are, are authenticated, verified, and notarized, they are moved to the cloud. In our proof of concept, that backend deployment consisted of multiple containerized services running in Azure. Those included a blockchain service using Quorum with a smart contract to record the digest value of the data manifest, an authority and provisioning service used in combination with a secure hardware key, a NoSQL database to store notarized manifests, object descriptors, and associated metadata, and then finally, a blob store for the cloud data storage. We made sure a trust relationship exists with any element in the, that, uh, in the system that touches the data. So for instance, the drone or edge server requires provisioning of its devices and services. That drone using a pre-provisioned, or that's done, sorry, using a pre-provisioned multi-factor authentication device to, to authorize and then create and sign the certificates for all devices and services within the trust network. The majority of the project was developed in Go using gRPC for communications, Solidity for a quorum smart contract, and then C, C++ for enclave applications. The trusted endpoint uses a, a high five unleashed development board. The board has a multi-core RISC-V chip, in this case is a sci five Freedom SOC, and that contains four RV64 cores with virtual memory support, one management core, two megabytes of L2 cache, eight gigs of DRAM, and then some additional peripherals. The board runs a Linux OS um, onto which we developed a set of uh, Keystone Secure enclaves. We also tested the DICE cryptographic identities to generate fingerprints for all drone data. For the purposes of this proof of concept, the enclave's cryptographic identity is actually used as a proxy for the, drive, for the drone's identity. As mentioned earlier, in order to trust the drone as an authorized vehicle for data offload, um, its identity must be known and provisioned within a trusted domain. So for that, we use a Yubico multi-factor authentication key 
to generate X509 certificates, including one for the drone. We did the same, by the way, for the other components in the POC ecosystem. As mentioned, um, we used enclaves based on Keystone, which is an open source enclave framework developed at UC Berkeley's Adapt Lab. Simply put, the enclave model can be compared to a secure container in which applications run in isolation, while assuming that the rest of the system is untrusted. Part of the secure enclave functionality is the ability to authenticate and attest to the integrity of enclaves. The attestation in that case proves that the enclave have not been tampered with. Um, this then makes a statement about the integrity of the enclave itself, plus the integrity of the code running within the enclave. Keystone uh, uses risk five PMPs by the way. So this allows executable code to run in machine mode underneath, for instance, the Linux OS, and then create pr protected physical memory regions. In the case of Keystone, it runs a very small trusted compute base called the security monitor. The security monitor is key to the memory isolation model for the enclaves. Each enclave has its own isolated physical memory in which you can, for instance, run a real-time OS in supervisor mode. Linux support is provided by the project. And so did, this really allowed us to deploy Keystone enclaves onto the High 5 board in a pretty straightforward manner. And um, the open nature of Keystone allowed us to tinker and make it really work for our environment. For instance, we integrated TCG's DICE functionality. A key takeaway for us is that virtualization really increased efficiency in this case. Uh, we used KMU. Um, it allowed us to seamlessly migrate from emulator to hardware and back. And that was extremely uh, useful for debugging. It allowed us to move really smoothly between RISC-V and x86 Linux and even ARM-based platforms with, uh, with a pretty much a single set of source code. Frankly, there are many use cases for secure process isolation, but our main focus for now is the protection of cryptographic functionality. For instance, in our case, cryptographic signing functions that were really needed for the endpoint identification are executed with the, within the enclave. Um, so that's therefore never exposing its private key. For this POC, uh, we developed and deployed secure enclaves for identity attestation, and for digital signing of data, data manifests. As noted early in the talk, um, the Keystone Enclave firmware framework has its own built-in attestation capabilities um, based on measurements taken during the secure boot process. At each CPU reset, the root of trust does several things. Um, for instance, it measures the security monitor image it generates an attestation secret key, and it signs any measurement and public keys with that secret key. But out of the box, Keystone currently simulates a secure boot process using a modified bootloader. In the real world, uh, we need a secure boot process backed by hardware root of trust. And for that, there are multiple ways of solving that problem. As an example, during the 2018 RISC-V summit, speakers from MicroSemi showed us a solution using an FPGA system controller. In our POC, we changed Keystone to make it work with the trusted computing group's DICE cryptographic functionality. Going forward though, we really see OpenTitan as another and very viable solution for hardware-based uh, secure boot of Keystone. So, very brief background around OpenTitan to set the context. It is an open source project with the objective to design an open, transparent, and high quality uh, silicon based root of trust. Seagate, amongst others, is a member of the OpenTitan consortium, but the project itself is managed by Low Risk, uh, not for profit out of Cambridge, UK. Low Risk also manages the IBEX core project. And that project defines a configurable 32-bit in-order RISC-V core with a two-stage pipeline. 
this risk, this IBEX score um, then forms the basis for Open Titan and is complemented with a number of additional IP blocks. Those um, actually include memories, security blocks such as AES and SHA, IO and other peripherals, uh, a tile link interconnect, and then device functions written in C. The project currently supports both simulator and FPGA targets and is available on GitHub. So I truly recommend you check it out at opentitan.org uh, for more information um, about the project. Seagate is investigating how open source hardware designs can be used um, to implement the security needs for endpoints in any storage platforms in the future. In order for us to test our thesis, which is edge deployments benefit from an open root of trust and an open enclave model, um, we need to develop a, a research platform. What we did is we converted an existing Seagate product into a endpoint storage evaluation platform by redesigning the board and adding an FPGA device. Besides those key changes, we also added uh, peripheral IP blocks where needed. In this case, um, a Xilinx IP blocks for SPY, QSPY and I squared C, for instance. We added a placeholder IP block for not yet available IP in OpenTitan. Uh, we added proprietary IP blocks to enable advanced functionality such as a SPY interposer or a reset controller. We also added an extender board for debug and bootstrap and um, had to modify the power supply to support the addition of boards in FPGA. Uh, what we will do is we'll use that FPGA as a target for our internal Open Titan builds to really test both the Open Titan IP plus investigate integration scenarios for our Open Titan. The main one or the main integration scenario that we're initially going to focus on is the validation of TOC, which is an open source uh, OS written in Rust and modified by the community to support Open Titan. In the future, we look uh, to potentially include DICE support and OCP's project server uh, integration. In that case, we're planning to use Manticore, an open source implementation of the actual Cerberus protocol for attestation. Um, and in that case, we definitely want to focus on missing functionality that's required to improve edge stores security. So to summarize my talk, um, the growth in edge compute and the rapid adoption of ML and AI technologies will drive the need for better data security. For those use cases, it is key that we trust all the data created by endpoints and have to have a way pretty much to always validate the integrity and the provenance of that data. With Risk Five and its ecosystem, we get a really unique baseline. Um, and that baseline can be built to build more secure systems that will provide, uh, you know, data protection throughout the life cycle of, uh, of the data. These systems will range from small endpoints to large HPC clusters, but, you know, in all cases, improved security is really needed for data trust and worthiness. And finally, OpenTitan is a RISC-V domain-specific security solution that will significantly improve hardware security and thus the overall integrity of systems going forward. If you like, you can reach out to me at manuel.offenberg at cga.com. I really would like to thank you for your time and have a good day. Thank you.